Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. Now, for once, we've had a bit of a limited fixture list uh, in between episodes, so there's not too many games to talk about, but we do still have the two games today, which are, I mean, massive, against Frem and against Mali Unleashed. Those two games could be... I think those two games could be the ones that decide our season, in all honesty. If we were to lose both of them, that could be catastrophic. If we win both of them, I'd say we're probably going to be safe. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at some of the fixtures so far. Now, I decided that while I'm going through these, even though it's going to be quite brief, I'm going to show the stat screens for each game. That way you kind of get a better idea of what the games were actually like. Against Vale, we were so unlucky in this game. You might look at that and say, they had tons of shots. You didn't deserve that. Well, we probably kind of did actually deserve something from the game. We created five really good opportunities in this game. We took the lead for Thomas Ofori, but they got two goals in the final 10 minutes, and one of them was in the 95th minute from Pavla Vajic, which is a aggressive sounding name and i like it um but unfortunately we couldn't pull off a shot result against top of the league betzer though played brilliantly it's also very much worth noting that on that last match day fixture both frem and vidovra conceded seven goals in their games and frem conceded seven to kurga so yeah poor start for them but next up we found ourselves away at skiva and to be honest this, this game was dead after 25 minutes yes we got a goal in the early stages with them to get it back to 3-1 but we were 4-1 down after 25 minutes we did get one more back through alan france and ronnie and carter did play very very well for us and uh, was possibly a candidate for man of the match so we didn't deserve anything from the game but it was nice to see us scoring a couple of goals at least against frame out i think we we're a little bit unlucky to only get a two all draw in this game but that does seem to be the kind of well of uh, the way of the season as it were we took the lead through thomas afori early on who's been netting a few goals now which is good they got one back from the penalty spot um i mean it's kind of they had enough chances to kind of deserve the result but i just felt like conceding another late goal was not exactly ideal for us we thought we'd won it for mikhail nigard but they did equalize late on then get a man sent off but it was too late to do anything a poor result really final game in this little run was a good win away at vidovra but what i would say is like look at the amount of chances they created compared to us i mean okay there weren't that many more but they had a lot of shots I can see why they're down there. They cannot take their chances. They couldn't, like I said earlier in the save, they, they couldn't finish their dinner this lot. Um, Franson grabbed himself a pair, Nigard got one, and Thomas Afori got the other, but he did have to go off injured, which was disappointing. Franson was man of the match, though, an excellent performance from him. So all of that leaves the league looking like this, and it's actually pulled us quite a way clear. Despite only winning one game in God knows how long, the teams below us have just been so much worse. Mali and Least are six points above the drop zone, and we're nine points above the drop zone. So really, we could start to secure that safety um, if we can grab a couple of wins today. Things aren't looking too bad. It's just been that the teams at the bottom have been so, so poor this year. We might not even need 25 points to stay up this season. It's crazy. Nigar's still top scorer in the league with 17, but Franson's in there behind. We're one of the highest scoring teams, but also one of the worst defences, so it's kind of a bit hit and miss. Franson also has 10 assists and is one away from equaling the record in this division. I think he can do it. So one thing I am going to try and do in these episodes is try to show at least two player profiles per episode so you can sort of see how players are developing and also potentially declining. See, so as you can see, Mikkel Nigar is now only a three uh, two and a half star rated player in this team so very soon we're going to have to start looking for someone in there to replace him although he will stick around at the club because i mean he's not great for tutoring but he at least is capable of doing it and that's more than i could ask for from some of the other players in this team we did also get £103,000 for being ninth which is great gives us a bit more funds again uh start to get us back in the black regarding uh yeah that kind of thing Annoyingly, Oliver Betzer did pick up a groin strain during that run of fixtures, and he has missed a few of them. He won't be able to play today, but he should be able to get back in time for the next game, which is pretty damn good, because we need to try and keep this guy improving, because I think he really is going to be a star for us one day, unless he gets picked up by one of the big sides, which, considering he's got Super League potential, is likely. Since we don't look at this screen very often, I thought we'd take a quick look at it today, just so I sort of so you guys can see anything you might be interested in, with Mikkel Nigard and Franson being the top scorers. Obviously, these guys out on loan isn't really as important. Only really got two guys banging in the goals so far this season. Assists-wise, um, Billy has done all right on that one. It, it's definitely interesting. Average rating overall, uh, Franson's doing excellent there. Nigard, Betts has also done very, very well. And we have signed a couple of new guys too, so let's talk about that now. So there was the youth intakes again, and I noticed there was a few French lower league clubs that hadn't got players on proper contracts, which was ideal for me. So I tried to sign a couple of them. The only one I think that's really any good is this guy, Pierre-Yves Julien, which is a brilliant name. Um, he is a central midfielder. First touch is solid, marking not great, passing, tackling, it's, he's okay. He's a backup player, lots of room to improve. And considering we lost the likes of Einstein, it's good to try and bring through some players. And also, our first French player in the save. You can't go wrong there. Now, it might not be super important in the grand scheme of things, but we haven't actually talked about our under-19s because they are playing in a proper league this year. Um, which we are currently sitting 11th in. But, I mean, can you really blame us? Look at the sort of teams that are in this division with us. Um, we've managed to pick up three wins as well, one of them which was scoring seven goals past Freymad, who's under-19 size, not great. But you can see, once again, 
we might not win a lot of games, but we definitely do still score a lot of goals. Hence why our goal difference is so much better than the teams around us. The same could kind of be said for our reserve team, except they're doing a lot better. Okay, they've, they started off the season quite well and have kind of got worse from there on, but we've got some players involved. Best scorer in the entire division, or not quite. Um, but Biggerson is excellent in there. Jacob Merler's doing well. We're beating teams who are much better than us. So I think there's a lot of potential in us, maybe even winning some under-19 cups at a later date. Now, if we can't actually play today, which is a bit of a pain in the bottom, um, so we're going to just have to go with... We'll go with O'Neill, but I might put O'Neill there and Nigard out on the wing because O'Neill just seems to perform better there. Um, Ingolson, I've tried him a few times. Hmm. See, Benson's starting to drop off a little bit. I'm tempted to try Julian again. I've tried him in one game and he actually performed quite well. So maybe giving him another run out today wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. I'm still sort of trying to find an ideal centre-back trio. Next year it's going to change dramatically because I just don't think Gregerson's going to be good enough anymore. But we're going to go with Gregerson, Campbell and Lassen uh, for today with Good Johnson in goal. Gunnarsson and Borup on the wings. On the bench, Beastguard, Sepeo, Benson, Bigler, Madsen, Ingolson and Surum. Oh yeah. I told them to carry on for where they finished in the last match. Didn't really work that well. Um, motivated a little bit. This is really the one that I think is most important to win, even though they are not the ones that are in the relegation zone. It's the home game, which has generally given us a better option in the past. So, question of the day, and today's question is this. What's the best nickname you've ever had for a player at your club? Now, for me, um, I had a little think about this one. The best one I can think of is uh, there was a player called Papa Booba Diop at Fulham about 10, 12 years ago. Big Senegalese, I think he was Senegalese, midfielder. And he was huge. And we used to call him the wardrobe. Uh, I don't know if that nickname carried over to other clubs or not. He played for Pompey for a bit as well. Uh, but that's probably my favourite nickname of all time for any Fulham player anyway. Um, so yeah, let me know. If you have any ideas for a question of the day and also what your favourite nickname from a player at your club is, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Right, um, so not started too well here in terms of actual chance creation. Eight minutes gone and nothing's really happened yet. Um, cleared it. Oh, wow, over the bar. Um, I wouldn't be too annoyed if we only drew against them today, but I would like to pick up a couple of more wins before the end of the season. Because these are the sort of games where you're going to get a chance to win. And you really need to take them while you can. Julian and, and Carter. Ooh, nice effort there. Um, we've got to keep an eye on the game below. I don't know who Frem are playing today. Vidovre, it kind of doesn't matter who they're playing. They're looking dead in the water at the moment. Good Johnson looks long. Can O'Neill win a header or something? No. This is why we missed Thomas Afori. That guy would have won that easily. Ball out wide for failed Bala. Um, they've started the stronger of the two sides here. Remember, they did take a 3-0 lead against us in the away match as well, which we managed to pull back to 4-3 and still lost. As long as it's 0-0, we can do something about this game. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it starts to become more of a problem if they were to take the lead against us. Right, we've got a 3-on-3. Three three. O'Neill's actually done all right there. Can he slip it through for someone? He's found Nigard. Mikel Nigard's in. What a save. Can Franson do something? Not quite. Best chance of the game, though, goes to us. So that's promising. Just keep spreading that play. Gunnarsson. Julian. It's nice having a Frenchman in the team. Franson. Just knock it back, Gunnarsson. Oh, that's nice football, actually, Franson. Squares it. Oh, nice chance again. So coming up to half time, still nil-nil. Please don't concede a penalty. Like, <laughs> that's the last thing we need at the moment is conceding another penalty. Schmidt, uh-oh. Fail baller, it's a bit tight. Oh, they've missed some good opportunities in this game so far. They really have. We've not been good at all, actually. To be honest, I, I kind of figured we'd been better, but I guess that the morale has really dropped over the past few games. Frem are playing away at Vell today, so you'd like to think that the top of the league could do us a favour at least and just put them to bed for us, really. Right, that seemed to motivate them a bit more, but I do think there's some changes that need to be made in the second half. Not entirely sure what changes just yet, um, if I'm honest. I'm, we're going to do what I usually do, which is just go to a slightly more longer ball strategy. I don't like to start with that because I find that quite often it does actually work just fine without it. But when games aren't really going our way, it does seem to be our first port of call um, in the second halves of games. Ritter. They are getting a lot of space down these wings, but our defenders have done okay at dealing with it so far. Um, there we go. And Carter does brilliantly. Now he's got options. Brennan O'Neill seems to have no idea what he's doing when he gets in those areas, does he? Uh, ben Sissel beating Helsing are not really relevant to us. He just seems to... He doesn't seem to be able to make any intelligent runs. Maybe moving him and Nigard over actually wouldn't be such a bad idea. Get Nigard in the middle. Oh... Oh my goodness. Oh, for Pete's sake. I thought we got away with that one there. It's, it's a deserved lead, um, but we've got to be so careful now. This is not a good result so far. We've not played well. We don't deserve anything from this so far. We're going to have to go attacking here. Just sort of slumped into the box from Jakobsen, headed by Ragus, and yeah, good work, defenders. Good work. So we're going to go on to attacking. I'm also going to swap our two uh, strikers over here just to see if that makes any difference whatsoever. Getting O'Neill into a more... Uh, comfortable position in the middle perhaps because he's not making any intelligent runs whatsoever uh, it might be a good time to get Rasmus Bigler on for him at some point soon as well uh, Franson looks injured too which is just 
just swell. Perfect. What we need right now is our best striker getting hurt. Well, oh, there we go. Vale have taken the lead against Frem. So it might not be the end of the ball. Nigard! Oh, what a chance that was. Difficult for him to bring that down, but it is an opportunity, you have to say. Okay, it's 2 0 to Vale in their game. Something that someone did tell me is against these 4 4 2 teams, if you actually exploit the middle instead of the flanks, you can sometimes overload them in important areas. So we might have to give that a crack today. Um, however, I am going to get Bigler on in that position. The left sided doesn't look great here for Borup. Gunnarsson looks like he's having an okay time. We might just leave it at that for now. I really, really want to at least get a draw from this game. Borup's not been good. We need to do something. Show something here. Peterson. Because the next game, okay, they're potentially a worse opponent, but we are away from home at them. Okay, change has got to be made now. Uh, Borup, we have no one on the bench to replace him. Gunnarsson's doing well. Uh, Ronnie and Carter is going to have to come off for Ingolfsson, and I'm going to get... Uh, Burger on for Brendan O'Neill in the middle. We're also going to stop exploiting that one side and try, since there's a lot of joy coming from Gunnison, we're going to try and exploit this right flank instead. Uh, might go to overload as well, actually, just because we need something from this game. See what we can do. It's not looking good here, to be honest. Um, 10 minutes to go, and it's still 1-0 to Marion least. Not, not good at all. Ball in. Uh-oh. Oh, and look, if anything, they look more likely to get a second goal than we look more likely to get a goal ourselves. If they did win this game, you certainly couldn't hold it against them. Like, they've played better than us, and it's disappointing to see us be so bad in today's game. We've just offered nothing. Um, all three strikers have done nothing. You'd think that against the number of centre-backs they've got, they're not playing a particularly bizarre system. you think the strikers would just be a little bit more proactive, but they're not. Branson headed away, and it's gone straight to them. It's just... Sometimes you just don't turn up, and today seems to be one of those days. Look at that, the ball's gone straight back to them again. And ball over the top for Ragus. I don't think he'll be able to get a decent chance in from there. Probably not, unless he can pull it back for someone. Nah. But still, we just don't look interested, to be honest. The players just don't look bothered. Right, Franson, he's got to look long here. Goes for Bigler. Oh, we need something back post cross, perhaps? Oh, it's in! Oh, and Soren Boya has an opportunity there to nick the equaliser for us in the 90th minute. It wasn't. It was a difficult chance, and he's failed to take it. We're still going to be nine points above the drop zone, um, but it could have been so much more it is my main annoyance there. And there we go. We've lost one nil at home to Marion, at least. Still above them in the league. Very disappointing. Just as a side note, I think Vidovra are literally basically relegated now. They are currently 18 points from safety with six matches left to play for them. Any point for Marion, at least, or us in the next game relegates them, essentially. I mean, they're basically gone already, but yeah. Right, we are back on the day of the Frem game. Usually there'd be some stuff in between, but there literally was nothing worth talking about this time around, so hey. Now, we've actually beaten Frem home and away this season so far, and we're going to have to play them for a second time away from home. I feel like if we were to take a win from this game, we'd be 12 points above them and 12 points above the drop. And I think then, I mean, we wouldn't technically be safe, but I would be as happy to call us safe as I'd ever been, basically. Um... Before he still isn't back for today's game, but big, uh, not big love, Betzer is. So I might throw him in because of how bad Bodup was in the last match. So here's the lineup we're going to go with. We're going to go with O'Neill, except I'm going to move him to the middle this time uh, because, yeah, he just wasn't good in the last match whatsoever. O'Neill, Nigard, and Franson in the middle. We're going to go with Julian again, and Carter and Benson because Julian, okay, he wasn't great in the last match, but I, I've seen things from him that I kind of like. Then again, his fitness level isn't great. Maybe we should bring him out and bring in Ingolfsson. Actually, yes, we definitely should. Um, he's at least a little bit fitter. And Carter and Benson. Then at the back, Betzer, Gregerson, Campbell, Gunnison, and Johnson in goal. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I was kind of hoping that the Marion Least game would be at least a point for us, so we kind of wouldn't have to worry too much about this game, and it would in fact be sort of icing on the cake type of territory. But they have lost all of their last seven games. Let's go out there and do something. I yelled at them at the end of the last game. We need to see something, uh, because... Oh, well, I mean... The result against Marion Lees was unacceptable. Um, we've won some home games lately. Then again, we did drop points against uh, Freymad as well. O'Neill, and it's a Frem free kick. So we are basically the team to watch out for in today's game because we're playing the team that are directly above us. Oh, it's a penalty. Oh, good God. Is it Betzer? It was Betzer, wasn't it? Betzer, you incompetent meat computer. What the... F I mean, three minutes in, and we're already going to be at a disadvantage. It's Stockholm, who's probably not from Sweden, has made it 1-0 to Frem in the first minute of the game, or the third minute of the game, rather. We can't really be affording to let them too close to us. Um, I know they've lost seven in a row and they are terrible, but don't give them even the whiff of a chance. The, the form seems to have gone completely out the window recently, and I'm not entirely sure. Look at this. Afori is missing uh, Nis. His absence has not helped us one bit. Um, we've looked a lot worse without him in the team over these. Then again, he was in the team against the two big sides, but these games are winnable ones for crying out loud. I'm going to put it onto attacking now because 
were already losing and they're actually started out quite well. They're keeping a lot of the ball from us so far, which is not great. And Carter, just show me something, lads. O'Neill and it's headed over the crossbar. And Carter again. Ball in. Campbell this time. In goal! What a blood... Oh, it's a fucking free kick to them. So little has happened in this game. It's not even worth talking about, really. Um, They're getting a lot of space out wide, although for some reason they've chosen not to use it there. Just, well played. Franson, can he get it in behind for somebody? He does find Nigard. Can Nigard do something with it? He has, you know. That is an absolutely sensational finish from Mikel Nigard, and we are level away at Frem. Thank God. I'm going to have a heart attack if we <laughs> ended up doing something here. That is a great ball up the peel from Ungolfsson. Lovely work from Franson here. I thought he'd go through the middle, but actually does pick out Nigard. I genuinely didn't think he'd be able to score from there, but that is a bloody excellent goal. And you can see why he's the top scorer in this division with those types of finishes. I think there might be something for us in this game on the break. If we can just maybe start to look for the long balls again. I know I keep going to it, but it does seem to work in some games. Learnfeld, don't let him shoot. Oh, no. Oh, good save from Gajonson. Chance creation in this game has been anything but excellent. But there's... Oh, that's a good ball. Betts has played an excellent pass there. Nigar, ball in. Franson, and it's... Well, I mean, it was never going to go in, but it's a good chance again. Ball in. Gunnarsson clears it away. Oh, man at the back post. This will be a simple goal. No, he's missed. It still has not been a good performance whatsoever. Ronnie and Carter's played terribly. Um, Luke Campbell's winning a lot of the possession. Hum. I think the long ball approach might be worthwhile in the second half because that seems to be the... Uh, yeah. Okay, motivation. That's what I want to see. A bit more motivation from them. They just seem to have lost their attacking bite over the last few games. Even against Vidovra, we might have scored four goals, but we weren't looking too good still. So we are going to go with more direct passing. Um... I don't want to close them down too much more. I think we're actually okay with that for now. We're just going to have to see where this goes. It's not great. I mean, as it is, the draw isn't the worst result in the world because it does keep us nine points above them and really does start to say, right, just drop it outside, O'Neill. You, you've got a winger there. Use him. Gunnarsson, and he's done that. But if we were to lose to them, it would start to put that pressure on us coming late on. Cleared away. Ingolfsson, will he go for the goal? No, he doesn't. Franson, oh my goodness. That's going to be offside, isn't it? Yep. Ah, uh, good. Okay, Oliver Betzer is not playing well today. Did I? Yes, we do have Rasmus Borup. I know that he played badly in the last game, but he's not played as badly as Betzer has today. Um, Ingolson's not been great either, and I'd be tempted to maybe get Dear Moser in, just so that we've got another player in that role that can really, although maybe switch the two of these two over. Um, let him Carter play in that role instead, just so we've got two really accomplished players in that middle role. I do want to give more game time to Dear Moser. I just feel like there is a goal in this game for us. Johnson. And Carter, there we go, 2-1. Ronnie and Carter, who's now white, apparently. Brilliant, well done, FM. There is a reason for that. Basically, when you load the game to start with, if you hit continue before loading any other screens, sometimes it messes up the cache. And the way you can get rid of this, because I've had some white players turn black as well, is you just clear the cache and it should fix it. It's not total fix, because it will come back. Dear Moses Ball and Carter, the midfield pairing combined for an excellent goal. Right, uh, I am going to switch it back on to counter now, though. Um, no point in getting caught out trying to push for this one. We are winning, though, and that is massive for us. We've played very well in the second half, or the game certainly seems to reckon so anyway. Um, anybody going to go and close him down there? We've got Irma Gerd coming down the pitch here. Fred Stard. Just get out. Oh, my life. Oh, great clearance there from Borup. At the moment, things are sitting pretty for us. Just, just at the moment, though. It could easily change. Um, they only need one goal. I mean, I wouldn't be too annoyed if we only drew this one, but when you're actually winning the game, it would be very frustrating, and it could move us 12 points clear. And that's really what we need right about now. Juice, just go on. There we go. Shoot from range. More of that, please. Right, one more sub on the way. Actually, I'm going to let this highlight play out first and see what happens. Franson, they're looking for... I've noticed they're doing a lot of the old... Sort of... They're actually playing the ball in first time rather than taking it short. And Carter, dear Mosa, looking long and the keeper will have that no problem. Right, changes afoot now. That must be the end of the highlight. Um, hmm. What's left on the bench? Sepeo has good... No, he's actually played all right. Bigler, maybe, for Brendan O'Neill in the middle, who's looking a bit nervous. Just a thought. I'm not sure where else we could make the changes, really. So we might as well make that change. Get Rasmus Bigler on. He can stretch tired defences a bit. He's generally quite good at... What was that, Soren? He's generally quite good at stretching tired defences. Um, despite not being that pacey, he does seem to operate as if he has loads of it. Franson. Might just have to dig a shot out here. Gunnarsson. Diamosa. And Carter. Those two have linked up nicely in the midfield today. I've got to say. It's been nice watching those two since the changes. But oh, no. Ermagerd is through. That's got to be a goal. What a save from Good Johnson. He might well have just kept us in the lead of this match. Come on, guys. A win in this game, and it's basically guaranteed us another season in this division. Bigler. Oh, Rasmus. Uh-oh. Spacing behind. Got to be careful. Camil. We know this ball's coming across. Oh, that's terrible. He should have just squared that to his teammate. Honestly wondering if we drop a little bit deeper, perhaps. Um, encourage them to shoot from range. Don't let them get in behind. Just for this final 10 minutes. I, I don't know if this counts as deeper, but it doesn't feel like it to me. And Carter. 
all the way out wide for Nigar. Doesn't matter. Just keep it in that corner. Can we turn time wasting on or is that only on certain defensive strategies? Diamosa, Nigard, Marion least are winning again, so that's not great for us. And Carter, uh, it's a poor effort on goal in the end from him, but it's better. Good Johnson, looking long this time. Franson might be able to win it. He, well, he hasn't won it. But he's got him behind anyway. Alan Franson. Oh my goodness. Frem one B sixty seven three. I feel a bit hard done by for them. Um, I feel that they probably could have done more from this game, but I think we've done very, very well to turn this around in a really, really tough game. The defender here is just woeful. Franson brings it on the chest, and that is a gorgeous little finish from him. That is composure from him. 3-1 to B67. Thank God for that. Well, with 10 seconds to go, it looks like we are going to get the win, and the win that I think personally is going to keep us in this division. I, I don't see us con conceding 12 points worth of results in six matches. It just seems very unlikely. Uh, and with that as well, Vidovre are relegated from this division. So this is how the league is looking after that. Nigar with 18 goals is the top scorer still. Franson does get an assist, so he needs one more assist from his next six matches to break the record for this division as well. He's the best player in the division at the moment, according to the average ratings. Although I do think that is a bit skewed because our strikers and are basically acting like the assisters all the time as well. But still, we've got eight wins, 12 defeats. We've only got a minus six goal difference too, which is great. I think we've done enough to stay up. It's touch wood, 12 points would be a lot to lose in that period of games. And that would mean that Prem would need to win at least four of their remaining six matches. In fact, they'd have to win six and draw one. It, it, it ain't going to happen. I think we've done it. But the best thing we can do now is try to concentrate on seeing how far up we can go. I think the maximum we could finish would be eighth place. With the right run of results, we could potentially get eighth place, uh, which would be good just because money. That actually reminds me, back when I was doing FM YouTube before with Wimbledon and with Midland, I used to do at the end of seasons a big analysis video. There was no face camera or any nonsense like that. It was just me going through stats, talking about the season, doing some analysis, in my mind anyway, um, of what I think of things. It was a long video. It was kind of very, uh, a lot of rambles, basically. The sort of stuff I'm trying to sort of keep on the down low in the main videos now. But I'm just wondering if you guys would like to see me bring those back. Obviously, it wouldn't be integral to watch it to enjoy the series. It would just be something extra for those of you that are really interested in the stat side of things and looking at things and just sort of general planning for the following seasons and stuff like that. Um, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. It wouldn't be on the end of this season. I'd have to start doing it at the end of next season just because of the way things have fallen. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about that idea. And if you have enjoyed this video, drop a like on it. I know it wasn't quite what we imagined with the, uh, winning the losing the home game and winning the away game, but I will take it. And if you're new to the channel and did like what you see, do be sure to subscribe for more videos like this Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And I will see you guys very, very soon for the final games of the season, which are against Vale and Esbia. Um, I can't see us winning those games, but we've got a couple of home games in there against Helsingor, uh, Roskilde. Maybe if you get something from them, I don't know. But as long as we can get to 33 points, then I'll be happy. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.